Welcome, welcome, to those welcome to the Ethos Effect podcast. podcast. After building and learning from failures, we discovered our ethos and leveraged it to, to scale, sell, and build again our seven figure businesses. Whether you're starting out or leveling up, this podcast is your source for innovation and lasting impact. Welcome to the Ethos Effect podcast. Today we had on Brian Descent. I call him Pravada Brian. Pravada Brian is because we have a lot of Brian's in our life and Pravada Brian is an easy way to say it. Yeah. So this episode was 100% for me. It I have was. been, it's not about cigars, but uh, Brian is the owner of Pravada Cigar Club. I have been a customer since 2017 and I've watched his business and the things he've do- he's done. And I've just kind of related a lot of it to our own path, our own business. And He's a marketing guru. Yes. I mean, he really is. He, you know, started his business largely by accident, um, completely by accident. Actually, he just bought a bunch of damn cigars and he had a, a <laughs> room full of cigars. And then he moved to LA and he didn't have a place to put them. And he started selling them in, in like sampler packs or like three packs. I mean, just a really, really great marketer and passionate. And then, you know, his beliefs on excellence, I think he embodies it and, and does it in his business. So, Let's get into it. All right. Today, we got Brian Dessen from Pravada Cigar Club. Uh, this is very much a episode for me. <laughs> totally. I actually could probably leave right now and nobody will notice, which will be a nice change from our other episodes. Notice, yeah. But okay. Well, our listeners are probably like, yeah, we'd love for Chelsea to stop talking once in well, a while. You're, you're, you're you were there when we smoked cigars. Hell yeah, yeah I was. Yeah. Sure. And I yeah. enjoy a good cigar. Yeah. And yeah. I also I, enjoy the joy that you bring my husband oh, to your that's company. that's amazing. And you know, that's the thing that's driven me all this time. Like, I had no idea. And we, we could definitely talk about that. But I do want to say I had this uh, two beautifully selected cigars for both of you, mm-hmm. and I just left them at the office. So I'll, I'll ship them <laughs> over. But I was like running out of it. We, we've had this has probably been the toughest two weeks of my career. I saw. Wow. I saw. Yeah. We'll talk about that because yeah. I've seen what you guys been posting. What it's you're been doing. dramatic, man. Yeah. It's been dramatic trying. or traumatic. Both. Both. <laughs> yeah. All the bad things. Shit. So we actually yeah. love on this podcast, we talk about success, failure, all the things with business, but I know Donovan's been really eager to talk to you. So I just want to prep you. We do want to talk about some of those yeah, no, failures, I, listen, so, but I'll let I, him yeah. start. Of course, the failures are what make you. 100%. Well, there's so many interesting things. And I think part of it is like where the cigar industry was for consumers prior, because it's kind of a daunting thing. But why don't you start by telling us what Pravada Cigar Club is, and then I love the story about how it started yeah, as well. Yeah, so Pravada Cigar Club is, or started as a uh, subscription-based business in 2017 when subscriptions were really starting to come into their own. Um, I had a cigar collection, so I can kind of tell both in the same uh, in the same uh, breath here. It's I, I had amassed a collection of cigars that got too great. It was just too much. And uh, my wife and I, uh, well, she got pregnant and we decided to move back to Los Angeles to be closer to her family. Uh, she's Armenian and that's a tight knit thing. And um, we ended up moving from, we were flipping a house in Pennsylvania that was 6,000 square feet like in farmland. It was so beautiful. There's one video online where you can see the backdrop. It's like stunning. Um, And we were moving into a 750 square foot uh, apartment complex in right by the Grove in LA. And little did I know this apartment building, first of all, it was the worst living situation ever. It was like a prison. <laughs> you couldn't get food. To, like you had to like really go out of your way to get in and out of the place, which I understand there's security. It turned out that this place was like an influencer's incubator. Every, I mean, you could literally go on YouTube, watch five videos, go out to the pool and see two of those people, three of those people there. There was one woman who she was very popular. She deals with mental health. She was like an escort that was on some reality shows. A thick girl, you know, it's kind of, I mean, it depends on what you like, but uh, <laughs> I thought she was hot, but you know, like she's also kind of cr- like sc- crazy, scary, yeah. crazy. Um, and she's, hot she's and like wild famous. I forget her name. And then there was this sneaker blogger that I used to watch. Cause this is around the corner from like Supreme and all this stuff. Um, Manny Pacquiao was staying there when he was training for some fight. And there was just like, everyone was there. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm there and I'm 
kind of starting Pravada Cigar Club. It started really in Florida, and then when we went to Pennsylvania to flip the thing, but there was nothing happening. I had no members. I wasn't selling anything. Mm -hmm. And then when we were kind of like staying in L.A. for a little while, it started to start to become something. Yeah, not really. Just, you know, a couple of like, we were just putting the the foundation in place, you know? And um, yeah, so... uh, the other part of the question was, so how we started was, I basically, I was a sneakerhead and I got to a point where right before I met my wife, I was like, this is kind of um, childish, the right? This thing. is kind of like getting immature. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? And then like I move around a lot. I go from like Miami to Tampa and I got all these sneakers. It's like, what? I never wear them. It was just like, all right, this is, let's, Girl let's, up. yeah, let, exactly, <laughs> right? This is right before sneakers became worth a lot of money though. So, I, there were rare pairs that were, you know, could get Shit. you some money. Missed but opportunity. Yeah, not, not <laughs> really. I didn't have like the, I, I had some really cool stuff, but nothing that was in the thousands or anything, right? So, um, so I was like, let me get rid of this. And I'm sitting in a uh, uh, in a cigar shop in Tampa. And I don't really love cigars yet. I'm just there because I had started my own business. I was an auto transport broker. I could work from home. So I would take the laptop out. And I wasn't a big coffee drinker. So I didn't like sitting. In, and plus, I'm, I'm, I'm on the phone selling. Right. So it was just more conducive in Tampa, Cigar City, to go to cigar lounges. And so I started going to cigar lounges. I would buy a cigar just because I was there and I don't want to be rude, right? And I would smoke the cigar. It was okay. It was all right. I wasn't tasting anything. I wasn't really, you know, I was right at the very beginning. And uh, this guy walked out with a, uh, a box of very rare limited edition cigars. And I said, what's that? And he was like, this is XYZ release. This will be gone by this afternoon. And I was like, okay. I got it in my mind that cigars were going to like three to four five fold in money. Like I felt like, okay, this is going to be like wine. I don't know where this came from. That was my gut instinct. At the time, I was always like six months ahead of the curve, like with craft beer, whiskey. I was always like six months ahead of the curve. And I was like, I'm not going to miss out on this opportunity. I just got rid of all my sneakers, put some money into cigars. I started collecting cigars. Moved up to Pennsylvania, got my wholesale license. I started buying collectible cigars all the time. Limited. If it wasn't limited, I don't want it. That's Pravada, right? Rare age limited cigars. And so... um, we moved to to LA. I have to get rid of these things somehow. So I get this idea to start this subscription. Uh, you get three cigars. Oh no, w- w- the real tell all was I went to sell them on eBay and different message boards, which you can't legally do. And people were just offering me like terrible amounts of money for these cigars. I was like, they don't understand. And by the way, as I'm coming here, I'm still in this mental state of the consumers don't understand. They don't understand how special these are. I'm wearing a Rolex watch. It takes supposedly, Rolex claims one year to make each each Rolex. It takes longer than that to make a premium age, not, not even with age, but to make a premium cigar from seed to cigar. It takes longer than that if you're going to do it right. So... It's a very special artisan craft product. And I think the frustration for me has always been explaining to people how special something is. Um, and so that's where the the kind of like motto or mantra of cigar of Pravada is, is these are different cigars. They're rare. They're different for a reason. And I can tell you why, where most people are just trying to sell you cigars. Right. This was very much, until Cigar Aficionado in the 90s, this was very much just a, um, uh, what do you call that when something's like you could just, like oranges, they're a a commodity business, right? right? So it was just a commodity business. Up until Cigar Aficionado, every cab driver and plumber had a cigar in his mouth all day long. Mm -hmm. They were five cents, okay? So Cigar Aficionado came out and they made it cool. And so you always have to give these people credit for that. We got the washed out, riding that thing out version of Cigar Aficionado. But during the heyday, during the 90s, they were doing all the stuff I'm doing times three, four, five, and but it was all in writing. Little did they know, no one would be reading within 20 to 30 years, which is just a shame. It's, and it's a fact. I mean, people don't even want long form content anymore, let alone they're going to read old articles. It's not happening. Right. So I'm able to retell some of that stuff in my content. And that's been a, a fun and exciting. But Getting that, the whole point of my content is to get that point out of why these things are so special. So long story short, I got this three cigar. I said, I'm going to say, I know what I'm going to do. 
They don't understand how special these, these are. So if I'm gonna sell them, now I don't know why I thought this, if I'm going to sell these at a discounted price, why would you, so the mentality on this is wrong. Why would you put more effort into selling things at a discount, right? So if I'm going to sell these cigars for less than what I paid for them or what, what they're worth, I'm gonna make sure that people know how special they are. So I would write, I was a writer, I was a singer songwriter up until the time, uh, like from like 15 to like 32. Mm -hmm. I was a writer, I was a creative. And so um, I wrote about each cigar. So you get this box, three cigars in it. And the truth is in the beginning, there were cigars you could find pretty much anywhere, except you couldn't find the backstory on these cigars. Right. So cigar, apparently the cigar industry has always had a major problem of getting content out. Why some cigars are more special than others had to do with marketing and, you know, maybe a million other things, who knows. But for the most part, um, that was the first thing I realized that we were doing differently than other people's. We were telling the story behind the cigars and uh, and the story of the people who make those cigars, which I think are is very important. I'm not into sports, I'm not into music anymore. These are my baseball players, my basketball players. Like these are my guys. They're, I look at them like professional athletes. They're they're Pablo. They're 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 the artist, mm -hmm. and so it's my job to tell their story because most of the time, a gringo like myself would go down to these countries, get these people to make a product, put my name on it, mm -hmm. Dessen, Davidoff, put, you know, and sell it. Right? It's very rare that that companies like Padron got to come out where they make their own products and got to market it. Mm -hmm. Right? Very very rare. So. Um, once that happened, um, I still had no business and I was ready to wrap it up. I was like, this is done. This is over. You're just was, trying to liquidate basically all of you. Would have liquidate? Hired. I couldn't do that. I tried that for six months. I couldn't do it. Okay. So I was like, I got epic fail. Oh, by the way, I also realized I'm very impulsive. So I just started <laughs> the business like, boom, let's go. How does and I your built wife like that? What's that? How does your wife like I, that? I don't, I don't know. I, I, she, she we likes need her it on now. the show. Good. Good. <laughs> she, she likes it now. I mean, um, you know, I've always been, by the time I met my wife, I had made every mistake a man can make. <laughs> I stressed the <laughs> so man. So now you're perfect. Yes. She tells you you're still you, making No, some. no, no, no. I've never, I've never, ever, ever, I've been um, completely faithful to my wife, my entire oh, relationship. No, no. Like I've never had any, I had gotten all that out of my system in the music career and just, you know, I, I, I guess I've always taken, even during my hoeing around days, I've always taken <laughs> like a relationship seriously. I always yeah. try to be, you know, right. a good person. Just integrous. Right? Yeah. I, guilt is a terrible thing for me. I don't want to hurt anyone. Yeah. You know. So um, that's that's the story of Pravada. So I'm sitting there. I'm ready to wrap this up. I was impulsive in starting the business and I forgot to look into a few key things. And one of them is in the business that I was in prior, this auto transport business, it's all pay-per-click. It's all uh, uh, advertising online, paid for advertising. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't do that with tobacco. Right. So I felt so stupid, right? So I was like, man, you know, this is this is my problem. I'm so imposed, so down on myself about this. I spent, you know, it wasn't a lot of money, but to me at the time, it was a reasonable amount. It was like 1,500, three grand by the time I got, you know, going. And I'm like, I can't even advertise this. I can't go on, on Facebook. I can't go, I can't do anything. So how the hell am I going to get the word out about this? So the business was fizzling out. And this guy, Rob uh, Gagne, called me up from Boboda. They make the two-way humidification. That's the first video I saw. Yeah. yeah. He said, um, hey, man, uh, I see you have this club. Um, if you send me the box on a monthly basis for free, I'll unbox it. And so I was like, honestly, I almost said no. I was like, oh, oh, fuck, another God. guy wants free cigars. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, nah, I can't even sell them at a discount. <laughs> this is not going well. This is not going well at all. So I said, uh, what else? What else? I mean, what do I have to lose? So I just sent it to him anyway. But I was pissed about the phone call. I remember right. being upset about that. Um, and so... I sent him the box, he got it, he unboxed it, and I got 50 members overnight. Whoa. And then I was like, oh, oh. this is how you market I this. It. Oh, and it's it's not free, but it's not expensive either, because then I just started calling every YouTuber. Yeah. Hey man, you have a cigar channel, I'll give you 50 bucks. Hey, you know, you know some guys like Brian Glenn were like, 50 bucks? You know, like that, yeah, that's <laughs> not gonna work. That's not gonna work. I'll, I'll take 500 though. 
all right, screw it. Let's let's do it. Let's do 500. So I would I was paying all these people, Delicia, Cigar Vixen, and then I ended up running into Jeremy Sires. Mm -hmm. And each one of these people uh, allowed me, you know, some airtime in front of their audience. And each time I, I grew and grew and grew. I think Delicia probably got me 500 to 1,000 members. Brian Glenn probably got me 1,500 members. I probably got exposure to 3,500 members through Jeremy Sires. Um, you know, unfortunately, you can't do this anymore. You can, you can do, you can retrace my steps, but the algorithm and you're not going to, if I had to start Provada Cigar Club today, uh, I would have had a hell of a time marketing this thing. It would have never gotten as big as it got. COVID, everything was on my side. Ti timing is everything. Timing is absolutely everything in life. My entire music career was bad timing, bad timing after bad timing. I can't tell you how many offices I walked into that were like, kid, 10 years ago, I'd have put a single on the radio for you. If it worked, we would have done it again and we would have kept going until it stopped working. That was the music industry. Then by the time I came out, the MP3 crushed that. Mm -hmm. So now it's like they don't want to do artist development, which is, which is the reason why music is shit now. When you stop developing talent, right? This is a lost art. This is why most content is garbage. This is why most... Oh, and by the way, the system, right? Like, so like, I don't want to sound like some sort of a uh, uh, conspiracy theorist, but the system, the labels, the commercial, the YouTube, right? Like the people who are making money off of this content want it to be as shitty as humanly possible, yet profitable. Obviously, I'm passionate about cigars. Yeah. But I have a real good knack for business and I'm also really creative. And so putting those things together have made Pravada Cigar Club pop. I believe that with a little good timing, I can do this in any industry. I don't think it had to be cigars, but I think it's important that it was cigars to begin with because I love cigars so much. And when you love something, it's so clear to the consumer. It's so, so, so we don't have this artist, to, I'll tie it back in. We don't have this artist development anymore, which means you really gotta love what you do because you have to develop yourself. Yeah. So yeah. can I, I give you my experience? Right there, mic drop on no. the, so. <laughs> I'll, like, I'll tell you my I knew I was going in. somewhere so with all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so so <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things that I've kind of watched in Pravada Cigar Club and I've watched it as a cigar lover, yes, but also I see like, I see something that you're doing. I find it interesting and I'm like trying to relate it to my business mm. in a couple of different ways. So there's a couple of things. One is the experience that you would have without Pravada Cigar Club trying to get to know, understand cigars, the differences, yeah. what you're tasting, what they pair with. So, you know, the typical experience is the local shop. You walk in and there's <sighs> rows and rows of cigars and you can't tell the difference mm -hmm. and there's no information on them. There's no sign. So mm -hmm. you're looking at the colors of the wrappers and the size and you're like, well, that's a cool shape. Oh, it's a light cigar. It must be mild bodied. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> no, it means nothing. <laughs> right. Like, it it doesn't. It yeah. is not telling to the actual yeah. experience. Right. Yeah. It's it's like it's like a coffee. Right. Like a, an espresso could be strong and bitter or it could be like rich and sweet. Comes from right? the same soils too. Exactly. So like the first thing was that Pravada Cigar Club gave a easy way for me to build my education on cigars. Mm. Love that. For the people that aren't members, Brian sends out these cigars. He tells you where they're from, what region they're grown, what kind of seeds, tasting notes for the first third, the second third, and the third third of the cigar, mm. what it pairs with, and then a story on the grower, the manufacturer, or, yeah. or the blender. And that cigar, like why yeah. they made that cigar in particular. So like being able to sit there and, and smoke and usually smoke with friends and kind of start to build that education is an experience that consumers really couldn't get anywhere else. Yeah. Which was, I mean, I can't, it, there's been nobody I've smoked cigars with that I haven't recommended join your club wow. for that reason. I, I'm like, you got to do this. Here's why. I'm so grateful for that. And I think a lot of people have had this experience, which means it was needed. It was There was a void. That was one thing that, okay, so like we're talking business here. This is a business podcast, which is why I wanted to do it. Um, there was a void. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of talk lately on business podcasts and reels and stuff about whatever you do today has to be exponentially better than what else is available. Okay. And I believe that. If you want to make a big impact. Now, there are a million businesses like my auto transport business that you can get in, 
and do it the same way everyone else does. And you can probably earn a six-figure living. But if you're looking to really have impact, you have to bring something to the table that's exponentially better than everything else available. Uh, Elon Musk having complete mental fucking breakdown now. I don't know what's going on with this guy, but we have to respect the fact that this man put out a car that is exponential. It's been 15 years, I think, 12 years since this man put out a car. And even his first model is better than the electric cars that a lot of these people are putting out. And they're catching up quick. Yep. Let's be honest. I, I'm, I've been looking at Mercedes. I was looking at that BMW. That 7 Series looks mean with the, the grill. I, I don't know. They changed the grill for the electric version. And it's it's tough looking. I like that. Um, but I'm not veering off Tesla. And I hear people say, oh, well, it's cheap. Is it? But when you drive a Tesla and then you get back in a gas-powered car, you're like, forget about the gas and the electric. I'm not going to do that. The, when I think about – there are tons of classic cars that I would like to buy. I won't buy them. There are tons of sports cars I want to buy. I, I was looking at a Maserati recently. They have put out this car called the MC20. It's, it's crazy. This thing has like a thousand different nuts and bolts and pieces. When I bought my Tesla, I said, well, what do we do for maintenance? They said, what maintenance? You get yeah. tires and brakes. It makes things, it makes everything else seem a little dumb, right? Yes. It was exponentially <laughs> better. Pravada Cigar Club was exponentially better. I didn't know that. Right. It was, I was just doing what I wanted to do. The, I wanted to give people the experience the way I wanted to experience cigars. And so one of the things that I came up doing was listening to uh, or watching reviews and then smoke, trying to find that exact same cigar and smoke that cigar while I read the review. And so that's where those notes came from. Yeah. But no one offered pairing notes before I came in the game, which I don't understand why. Um, no one gave you the real insight to why that cigar was made, mostly because, and I, I know why, and this is where I reached a point of contention with the brands out there and ended up having to go past the brand to the actual manufacturers. So I started Provada Cigar Club with marketing in mind. Mm-hmm. My idea wasn't to become this huge, the the real idea, I never really said this out loud, was just to get cigars for free. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to smoke for free. I wanted to constantly have new cigars all the time right. and I wanted to smoke them f- for free. So I did like calculations, like if I have 30 members, I could buy like three boxes of cigars, ship everyone two of them, and I could get a whole half a box for myself, right? And that that's really was like the, uh, the beginning of it, right? And then it was, oh my God, I've collected all these cigars. We got to get rid of some of these cigars. So it was, there was a lot of different like thoughts involved in this. So um, I didn't expect this business to become what it became. And I think that I just... For for young entre- or any entrepreneurs out there, and by the way, it's never too late. Um, you have to, if you want to have serious impact, you have to be exponentially better, and you'll know right away. I knew right as soon as Rob put that out to a couple hundred people, the phone lines lit up. You know right away. Oh, this was missing from this industry. Yeah. And then I went to the cigar brands and I was like, guess what, guys? I got this amazing situation where I can finally tell your story. And they were like, who guess. are you? Guess. Yeah. <laughs> no, not even. No, these are, these are, most brands are owned by American guys. Yeah. The guys that speak Spanish are at the factory making the cigar. Mm. So I went to a lot of brand owners that they're frauds. Yeah. It's like a, yeah. Seems well, they're, they're, they're probably like, already at the top too, right? Yeah. Whoa, 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 don't whoa. Don't mess with this. Yeah, don't, don't. Well, no, don't tell no. this story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anyone to know the, this real That's story. That's right. I, no, we're good. We're good. And I was like, why? I don't understand. And some of them were like legit rude to me. And so I, I'm a spiteful motherfucker. I am competitive <laughs> as hell. And it's like, you know, there's a there's a right way to say no to someone. And they didn't yeah. use that way. And I was like, okay, you know what? We're, we're going to shut these guys down. We're going to go way beyond. I see this. Now I see it. I get it. And then when I got to speak to manufacturers, they were like, oh, you're the guy that's, we need you. We need wow. you. Even cool. even guys like AJ Fernandez, the best of the best was like, when he saw me, he, he said, Spanish translates to English a little bit differently, but he said uh, it was love at first sight. He said, when I saw Pravada and I saw you talking about cigars, the way you were talking and giving real information. When I met Eladio Diaz, who was the master blender for Davidoff for 30 years and finally left because he can't take it anymore. He told me they've been lied to for decades. 
you you need to try to find a way to unprogram that. And so that's really, really hard. It's difficult. It's it's a task that I've taken upon myself. Um, it's really frustrating when, for instance, there's a brand called Atabe. So Atabe came out, I don't know, maybe like five, 10 years ago, and they had Cuban tobacco. That's what everyone said. They're Cuban tobacco. Well, the truth is, I don't, I don't want to get into that part, but I can tell you that the uh, cigar is owned by and is branded by the creative director of Habanos. Okay. So this is a guy who made all the Cuban cigar bands. Okay. Yeah. So when he walks around, he goes, they stole that from me. They stole that from me. He designed all that. He's like the Brian of Pravada. He is to <laughs> Habanos, right? Okay. Great guy. Nelson Alfonso is a, a legend, right? And so I make cigars at the same factory as Atabe. I make them with the same tobaccos as Atabe. And when someone comes to my website and says, you're out of Atabe, and I say, you should try this, they're like, no, no thanks. And I'm like, my man, yeah. it's from the <laughs> same family, the same rollers, the same tobaccos. Like, no, 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 you're not going to pull that shit on me. Yeah. I heard about you. <laughs> you right. know, it's like, uh, okay. Like, so, so it's, it's, there's always that uphill battle of spreading that information because I do want the cons consumers in cigars don't know what a good cigar even looks like. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, I could give you three cigars and people will pick the cigar that looks the worst. And it's like the looks aren't the most important thing. But if I show you, if you put three cigars on the table, I have a professional trained eye. I can pick out the one that they put the most time and effort into and that has the most expensive wrapper on it. And the reason I can tell that is because I've been around the guys. They've taught me the ways that. So if I know that this cigar had more time, energy, and cost put into it, it's probably going to be better. May not be, but it's probably going to be better because they took their time and did it the right way. And so the average American consumer cannot do that right now. No, for sure not. Yeah. They're, we're not given an education. Um, so this, this brings me into another point I kind of wanted to talk yeah. about because you're selling rare age, kind of limited edition cigars sure. in the club. And that's kind of the spirit. Mm -hmm by and large of the club, right? Stuff that you can't really get. Pravada is rare age premium. That's our three there you things, go, yeah. right? So you're doing that and then you kind of opened up a different path, which at first I'm, I'm like, God, why do you do that? And, I, and then I joined and I started thinking about it. I'm like, that's kind of brilliant. So farm rolled program. Mm -hmm. Talk about I that. I don't know if I should have done that or not. Really? Yeah, I don't know if I should have done that. Or I love not. it. I think those but cigars are fantastic. What it is? Yeah. So farm rolled. Yeah. So 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 Pravada is your your name brand. It's not even name brand. It's your it's your exotics. Yeah. Right. Sure. It's your like. Ooh, those are. Cool. Did you get this one? Yeah. People on Instagram going they can't crazy. Buy it. Yeah, you right. can't buy it they anywhere else. It. So it's like, what's the, what's that? What you know? So everyone gets the FOMO from this thing, and they sell out quick. So I make like ten thousand, and they're gone. Mm -hmm. Right. And so. So um, that's Pravada. Farm Rolled was, I'm building these relationships with these manufacturers and I'm walking around their factories and I'm like trying cigars and I'm like, what's this? Oh, this is that guy's brand. Oh, well, why are these here? Well, he asked for 10,000. We made, you know, tobacco is not that exact of a science where you can say, we're going to make 10,000 exactly. They bring in bales of tobacco and they're done making cigars when they're done. They can roughly tell you by the weight, we should be able to get 10,000 out of this amount. But chances are there's going to be 500 left over, 1,500 left over. Uh -huh. So I started taking those from the factories that I really liked and selling them with no bands on them. Because one of the things that some of my critics said about me was that I I was going to, um, um, my whole model was going to uh, cheapen cigars. And so I wanted to do the opposite. I always took that as a, as a challenge, right? I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to make the cigars more sought after. And, you know, I'm not going to discount them. They're slightly discounted in the club. They are. Mm. You know, you get three cigars for basically 30 bucks after shipping and everything. So whereas if you bought those cigars in singles, you're probably going to pay more like $45, right? right. $50 if yes. the prices are going up. Anyway, so um, I didn't want to cheapen brands at that time. Sometimes now I do just because they've been such assholes to me. So, <laughs> so I, I teeter back and forth as to whether or not that's a good idea. That's just spite business, yeah, right? All right. Yeah. So, so I said, okay, I'll take all of these leftovers 
off your hands for you. And I'll put them in a box with no bands on them. I won't tell people exactly what they are because we don't want to disrespect these brands. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a for sure no. And they were like, yeah, sure. Okay. That's a fucking great way to get these off my books. Yeah. And so I started taking these. I created Farm Rolled. They're four cigars for $20. They're all 15, 20, $12, $10 cigars. Yes. And uh, they're fantastic. Mm. And sometimes when I go, I, even to this day, like sometimes when I get a new shipment and I Google, I Agonorsa 6x46, I'm like, holy shit, that's a, and I smoke it and then I go get the actual box of the real cigar with the band on it. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, it's the same thing. I, I enjoy that. You can tell. A lot of consumers don't do that. I tell them, I say, Google the size in the factory, please. You're going to find pleasantly surprised. I, I, I love it because to your point, like you were talking about like, you know, people being loyal to the brand and not to the, not to the cigar, right? So you're like, hey, why don't you go try this one? Because yeah. you know exactly where it's from. That's the farm world. So you're like, skipping the the marketing on it yes you're going straight to the same guys that are yeah. making this in the same farms and factories yeah. not my most popular product either dude i love it yeah honestly like so, i don't i find myself reaching for those kind of most often honestly because they're, the, they're they're they are okay so another thing about pravada is is we kept outgrowing spaces very this is a real startup i mean it mm -hmm. started in a room mm -hmm. then it went to a garage then it went to a, a a space i guess we'll call it i was out of that space within six months we were in one warehouse uh three years ago now we're in three warehouses over the last two years so this thing has grown exponentially normally cigar companies will put water in the air they missed so they get that humidity mm -hmm. okay well Number one, that's bad for cigars. It's not good. It causes mold, beetles, all types of crazy stuff. So I always liked my coolers. That's how I stored cigars at my house, in coolers with two-way humidity because the two-way pushes and pulls, right. right? And it's not putting water in the air. That's the most important part. And so like when you go across the street to Corona, you can find moldy cigars on those shelves. No mm -hmm. disrespect to them. They've won the best selections in cigars, period. Okay. But it's impossible to keep water in the air and get every single part of your humidor to get humidity at the same level. You're going to have some that are going to be uh, uh, more wet than others, some that will be more dry than others. And because of that, you will find mold on shelves in big, big shops. So anyway, long uh, where are we going? Okay, so I started with these coolers. Okay. And it turns out storing cigars like this makes them taste way better. That's it's just a fact. Okay. And so a lot of people started asking me, why do your cigars taste different? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then I was at a, I was at a, like a lunch with my dad and a member of the club out in Merritt Island. Um, and he was like, bro, why do your cigar? Like he was asking me like on some, like he had a hunch something was up. What are you doing? And yeah. And yeah. I was like, what do you mean? And I tried to just like brush off the question. I was like, I don't know, you know, I don't, I'm thanks, you know. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, no, I'm asking, why do your cigars taste better? And I was like, oh, it's the, it, it's gotta be the coolers. It can only be the coolers. That's the thing. only difference. Mm -hmm. And so we stuck with that. We have 1,500 coolers right now, about 3 million cigars. I'm probably down, truth, truth be told, I'm probably down to like 2.1 million cigars. Okay. So, um, I don't want to bore people with cigar talk. I want to talk more about just business, mm -hmm. but the the you have to be infinitely better than, exponentially better than. There has to be a void for, right? right? If you're going to do something that's going to make as big of a splash as Pravada has made, you have to, some of those key things have to be there. You don't have to do all of these things to make a successful business. But if you want to become an interrupting, you know, situation, you have to have good timing, there has to be a void in the industry for what you can offer and you have to be exponentially better than what other people can offer. Otherwise, you can do very well, but you won't be Pravada, Tesla, uh, uh, Sierra Nevada. Like, you know, we're, we were approaching the second year of business, um, you know, for a buyout. And we're, I'm just not interested in that. At the time I was like, man, I would, and maybe for the right price, I would, but I, I have 16 people that have this tattoo. I, by the time I started providing, I said, no more tattoos. I'm not getting a tattoo. And I had to get this one. I should have got it a little bigger because some of these guys like have it like huge. Some There's 16 or 17 of us yeah. now. I got to take care of these guys for so life. And, and he doesn't numbers. mean employees. No, yeah. no. These, these are, are customers. These are customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah are customers. all over the country. He's branding They're my employees. friends. Yeah. They're my friends. They're my tattoo crew. Can you paint a picture of like the, the size of Pravada, like members and like how the business has yeah. grown, maybe for employees, that type yeah. of thing? Yeah. So um, 
this is a great conversation for people who want to be entrepreneurs. You, uh, no matter how far removed from being a pencil pusher or a uh, an MBA you are, you uh, need to start to study accounting on some level, bookkeeping on some level all the time. You have to figure out ways to make it feel interesting and you have to understand it because I have probably half the business that I had when you guys were hanging out at the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and I make probably three times the amount of money that I now than I did then. Yes. Because I had zero concept and it was growing so quickly, I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I, I had that coming to Jesus moment where like someone asked me about cash flow and I was like, what's cash flow? And then someone else was talking to me about cash flow and I was like, what's cash flow? And they're like, cash flow is like what you bring home. I was like, oh, you mean what I make? No, 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 no. It took me like months. <laughs> so, some things I'm just dense on, like accounting practices are what, like I have to, I went from cash method to um, accrual. accrual method. It took me like a year to understand. I just did it because I knew it was the right thing to do. I was angry about it for months and months and months because in my mind, I thought I was actually like somehow paying taxes twice. I didn't, I just could not grasp this concept. So there are some things I'm a complete idiot on. And this cash flow thing was one of them. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, I'm making this money. My at the, the my books say at the end of the year, I made, I think at our peak, we were probably at like 12 to 15 million, somewhere in there. Okay, 13, something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, there, but but what are you bringing home? That's cash flow. What can you take out of the business? That is cash flow. Right. And the person teaching me this was my cousin. He's an MBA from. Um, he went to Columbia for his MBA program. He went to University of Michigan. He's got like a four point He's like that. He thinks I'm the most brilliant person ever. I I like I look at him. I'm like this guy's a genius. And I you know, well, I was like some street kid that figured out how to sell cigars, right? Um, but I understand what he's saying. The marketing, the marketing is, is very hard for, I think most people to, it's, it's a, it's a talent or, and and I believe it can be developed too, but I don't think they teach you that, right? Mm -hmm. You can even take marketing courses. You're not going to be a good marketer. Um, so cash flow, accounting principles, I can see where a guy with a very not exciting business can make a better living than someone who's crushing life, right? And so that's what was happening. I was crushing life. We were dominating an industry. We were making enemies with the big guys and everything was all about Pravada and I'm not taking home any money. I am adding to my uh, uh, collection of cigars, which is my inventory, which is in fact my money. Mm. But I don't know about you, I don't want my life savings to be in a perishable product. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Because we had that storm. And sometimes you oh. open these things and there's beetles. There's oh. holes. Is that Your cigars are Swiss cheese. That's your money. That's like when Pablo goes and digs up the box and the money's been deteriorated, yeah. Yeah. right? That's no good. That's the second Pablo without a last name reference in this. I'm going to go for three. <laughs> I think Pablo Picasso, Pablo Escobar. I, there's another Pablo out there, I'm okay. sure. Okay. Uh, so, um, so, yeah. So, like that's not smart it's great for my consumers because we're we're like every box now is like five year age cigars three year age cigars two year age because i'm getting them with some age on them, then i'm putting the age on them myself and so we're getting this will never donovan this will never happen again in cigars i always wonder about it, that. it, it made no financial yeah. sense yeah um luckily they didn't perish luckily I am able to sell them over time. Luckily, there is a, a a sizable market out there that appreciates this now, right? And that's gonna grow. This is the craft beer of cigars, and this is just the beginning. Mm-hmm. But I don't think neither myself or, and I know for a fact, any of the big retailers in this industry will never ever invest in 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 aged cigars like this again. It no, just won't happen. It was hard to wrap your head around because you'll send out the notes and you'll say, well, when, you know, this had nine months in the factory and then I've been sitting on it for another year and a half. Yeah. And it's like, God damn, Brian bought, I know, and I know you're ordering 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 of these. And I've ruined and relationships over them. that. I've, and then like these people are probably like eager for them to come out and they want to hear about they their finally product. got with Pravada. Yeah. And then, I, and then I sit on their... <laughs> 
<laughs> by the time the cigar comes out, they're like, fuck you. <laughs> don't I don't care anymore. Yeah, I don't uh, even give a so shit. how many members do we have? Okay, so I'm going to give you the rundown. I started out with, uh, Rob got me the 50 members, right? And then I went on a string of about a year of uh, YouTubers and I got up to 1,500 members, okay? Then I met Jeremy Sires and I got up to about, Somewhere between 3,500 and 5,000, let's call 5,000 members, okay? Which is, I'm probably about 6,000 members right now, mm -hmm. okay? Um, now, other business owners would tell you these numbers a lot differently, and I'll explain why. So, six, but I know what you're asking, and I'm answering that question, which mm -hmm. is there are about 6,000 members. It fluctuates between like 58 to 6,500 members, right? Okay, in the club right now. Would you call a member an individual subscriber or that's, like- That's what I'm answering you with. Okay. okay, so there are other people that would answer this question a lot differently. They would say, how many one, how many one, subscriptions one. are you sending yes. out? If you ask me that, I'm, at, I'm still at like 12,000. Okay. At my peak, I was at 18,000. Wow. We were printing money, wow. okay? <laughs> printing money. 18,000 products are sold Right off the gate from uh, the first of your month, you're done. And then you still have other, other ways to make sales. Then we decide to do, this is my, this is my genius move, was the LCA. I was, so That's, that was my next thing, was the LCA. So is, rush that, turn right. it off. <laughs> Woo! Let's so go. So here's, here's, so you're a member of Pravada. You know, obviously Brian's competition would be the, the normal Cigar store, right? Like you're buying from him. And when I got in the business, it the was cigar store. brick and mortar versus online. They were correct. Mm -hmm. No Head one got along. So yeah. Brian's selling cigars and he also has his own cigar store. So you can be a part of the subscription clubs, which are great. And then you can also order boxes from him of yeah. all the regular stuff. So that's his business model. All of a sudden, like it's right after COVID, I guess, or during COVID, mm -hmm. He starts sending people to cigar shops because he does a limited release of a cigar. He made this whole network across the country, and it's called the Limited Cigar Association. It's supreme in cigars. And he says, mm. this Thursday, we're releasing in all the shops. Go get them. So he's sending people to his, in, competition. To his competition. And at first, I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? Everyone. I was like, I was like, I I was like wait work. a minute, wait a minute. He's like, and, and he's like, while you're in there, buy more cigars. I'm like, what is he that doing? That was the dumbest thing ever. I was, people would doing? send me pictures. I'm like, you don't even spend that on my site. Why the yeah. fuck are you buying? <laughs> so, Just buy the two cigars. <laughs> so, Come on. Yeah. At first I was like, God, what is he doing? And then I was like, oh, he just opened up distribution to cigar shops. I was like, he has direct to consumer. And he, now he's selling to, sh he's almost like a manufacturer now. Yeah. I was like, oh shit. So we're distributing. Tell us about how that started. So and lucky. How, how Timing is everything. And so I had the idea for a while because I'm, I'm a sneakerhead. Mm -hmm. I come from, you know, I was living off of Fairfax Avenue. I'm watching these kids camp out, le legit put up tents and stuff and camp out every, I think it was Wednesday night for the Thursday drop at Supreme. And I'm like, man, we, everything's always been about the culture for me. Because if the culture is healthy, my business will do well, mm -hmm. right? And so Cigar Aficionado was the and 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 I disrespect some of the guys over there because they're like kind of nasty with me. But at the same time, I, I will always have tremendous respect for uh, Marvin Schenken and what they did there. Um, they made cigars cool. Remember, they took something that was a commodity, put it in a celebrity's movie star, right? Yeah. Okay. Put them in movie stars' hands, and all of a sudden, like my cousin told me that in the '90s, like you would go to any bar or club you would go to, there would be women at the bar smoking a cigar. That that yeah. definitely means she's putting out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like no, I'm, I'm I'm joking, but but like you feel like you know that is a woman that is like you know sophisticated. She might take you home, not yes, the other way around. I think she okay, probably let's, would. Yeah. Let's, you can edit that part out. <laughs> anyway, so so um. So that's that's what they did. And they made cigars cool. So what happened to cigars after that? I call the cigar aficionado or the 90s boom, I call that disco. Mm -hmm. Okay? Cuz I come from music, so I that's the way like I look at markets and stuff. That was their disco. 
everyone was smoking cigars. People told me that owned shops that there would be lines down the block to get into the cigar. They couldn't keep product in stock. It got so bad that people were making cigars that weren't ready for the market. They were garbage. It was just complete right. shit, unfermented, the whole thing. Okay. And so what happened after that? It didn't last very long, by the way. I think they started the publication in 92, didn't really hit until 94, and they had until about 2000 of like an amazing run. And then by 2003, it collapses, okay? Um, still money to be made off cigars, but it's not what it was. Like if you got into it during those times, you're like, damn, this sucks. Um, and so what happens then? What happened after disco? Heavy metal. It's the complete antithesis of disco and the complete opposite of the Connecticut shade. The Macanudo and Cubans were like the thing. Mm -hmm. And so these guys come out in 2003 and they're all young. They're rock and roll t style guys. Um, and they're, they're making really dark cigars. They like Maduros. Why? It was a necessity. Nobody wanted that. It was cheap. Nobody wanted a Maduro. They wanted Connecticut Shade. And it's going to go back that way again. This Connecticut Shade is now three times the cost per pound for um, a wrapper relief than it was even, I think, when I started seven years ago. So for non-cigar smokers, kind of like light-bodied to... No, 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 no. Let's not no? go there. All right, no, let's it's hear just from different. They're just different wrappers. They're light in color. Light in color. Yeah, because I have... I have I typically find them so light they're they're a little bitter. Like versus a lot of people say that to me, they're my they're, favorite. They're they're a little bitter to me. Versus like I prefer something dark because you at least get some some like rich sweet notes. To each their own. And you're you're yeah. you're right. I guess I like that because I've had multiple people say this to me and I love a Connecticut shade. Mm -hmm. They're blondes, especially when they're blonde like that. Like they're like golden. They're like yeah. a, a movie prop. It's so beautiful. So um and then you, yeah, it's uh, look, it's all, it's all to their, to each their own, right? But um, it goes in waves, and so these guys come out, and they're like, they're not nice, they're grungy, they're uh, they're Gen Xers, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, I think that says it all, you know, <laughs> and, 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 yeah, <laughs> and it's like, it's a thing. Like there's a thing with Gen X. Like I'm like, kind of like the, the very beginning of millennial or the tail end of Gen X. Right. And like, I can go either way. I went right. well into millennial with like computers and stuff like that. So like you have Gen Xers that are like a year older than me, two years older than me that barely want to use email. So like this is, it's just, it was a style and a different, uh, uh, culture coming up. Um, and, um, it was cool. It was actually pretty cool because I don't think these brands really cared too much about sales. They were into making cool cigars. So where's this place was with the LCA? Okay. So with the LCA, by the time we get into the LCA, this, um, the internet basically severs this, right? So, um, you, it, there becomes this battle between online brick and mortar and uh, 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 I'm sorry, brick and mortar and mm -hmm. online shops, mm -hmm. okay? And the, um, um, I'm forgetting exactly how I was gonna tie that in, but bottom line, the LCA kind of brought that back together. Mm -hmm. And what it did was, this is where it all comes together. Yo, know, the, 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 the boutique movement, they call it. That was the 2003 on. Mm -hmm. The boutique movement, all they did was give cigars an attitude, brought it into your, like, the mom, it's like, it became very, like, Beavis and Butthead. Like, you walk into a shop and these guys are, like, oh, judging you on what you're getting and you didn't get uh, uh, this cigar, so you're not cool. And, and that's how, when I got into cigars and I was like, this isn't going to work. We're going to need a much more positive, like, friendly accessible. vibe. Yeah, yeah, accessible. Don't make me feel like an idiot for coming in here. That's yeah why online's kicking your ass right now. Yes. So my idea was, well, what's popping in pop culture anymore? Because Cigar Aficionado took Arnold Schwarzenegger, put a cigar in his hand, and they were like, this is cool, and everyone followed suit, right? Mm -hmm. um, what's cool now? For me, what's cool now is streetwear. You got a young black man from sh the south side of Chicago who changes Louis Vuitton with streetwear. You have all of this culture and fashion and art coming together in streetwear. Streetwear to me is the the culture. That's where the stuff is at. It's where art, fine art even, is meeting 
like kids in the street, right? So it's like all these things coming together. That's the cool thing. That's online. That's popping. Hype beast, all that stuff. That's what's popular. There's Supreme. They have this line around the corner every until cigars can do that, cigars aren't fucking cool. They're not. I don't want to hear about some dude that's retired that drives a Corvette and has a boat down in South Park. Like, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? So if if people that aren't into this stuff don't care about cigars, it will diminish. It will just go away. Mm -hmm. And it was getting very dusty. It was getting very mom's basement. It was getting weird. And so Pravada brought pop culture back to that. And we did it by creating spaces like this, putting cool stuff up. That people go, oh, I'm into Bear Brick and Louis Vuitton and this. And, and then they see my thing and go, oh, he's got Jordans back. Oh, I'm into that. Oh, he's into cigars. You know how many people I've turned on to cigars? I almost feel bad about it. Sometimes yeah. people send me emails. I'm like, damn, man, I don't want you to smoke. Like, yeah. I want to make money. But, I, you know, I, <laughs> I don't think it's bad for my health. I smoke three cigars a day. I really don't. I've been around guys that smoke 12 cigars a day. They're 86 years old, still walking around the factory. You know, <laughs> yeah, and I ask all the time. I've had th over now thirty five thousand members come through Provada Cigar Club during this this life of the club in six years. Wow! And every once in a while, someone will say, "I'm leaving for health reasons," and I always ask why. I've had one one guy who had lung cancer. That was it, mm -hmm. and he's a two pack a day cigarette smoker on top of the cigars. Ooh. So he's a truck driver. His name's like Russian I was gonna say, truck you, driver. You don't, yeah, you don't yeah, inhale yeah, yeah, cigars yeah, yeah. anyway. So, so right. So so, but people don't know that. Oof. And so um, it's uh, look, that's what's cool now. So I brought some cool on top of that business model. I brought something cool, something new, something young. We needed this. We needed that. And we still need more of it. More young, active people need to be smoking cigars. More couples like yourself need to be smoking cigars. It's just it's it's. It's so important because you can have as many PCAs out there and Cigar Rights of America, but when that uh, legislature, you know, those people, those Congress people, those uh, 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 representatives sit down to sign a bill that has anti-cigar stuff in it, they're going to think about you, the nephew. Oh, that my nephew loves cigars. They're going to think about young people. Are people, when you see someone smoking vape, what do you think? When they go, I'm not going to say actually what I'm thinking. <laughs> when, you so see them, when you see them, or when you see them doing the hookah, uh, doing the, I sound like an old man. The doing the, doing, the, doing the, the yeah. I, I think of, uh, I don't know, it's somewhere, something I saw on TV, but it, I always think of, you look like you're sucking a robot's D. Uh, okay. Like, oh, okay. All right. Wow. Like, <laughs> it's just a little, it's a little odd. <laughs> it, it looks, it, is super it weird. looks very weird to me. I think yeah. it looks unhealthy. Yeah. I see someone that's, that's damaging their lungs. Yeah. Yeah. So like we don't we don't want to we don't look like that when we smoke. When someone smokes a cigar, they're not coughing. They're not. No. <gasps> they're not doing it. They're not. By the way, all of these this hookah and now it turns out vape are like the most unhealthy things in the world. Mm. So like cigars aren't really that bad for you. So that leaves secondhand smoke to be the only thing that could potentially damage. And they've done studies and they're saying there's not much coming up. They, the FDA would have brought that to the table yeah. already. So the point is, is young active people should be enjoying a cigar for meditative purposes or communal purposes yes. or just to me, what, what they really are is I find people that get into cigars are foodies. Once you learn how to taste flavors, which took me like six, seven months of, you know, I'm sitting in that Tampa uh, West, hum uh, West side, West Tampa humidor. Mm -hmm. It's called Tampa humidor. I'm sitting in Tampa humidor and I'm smoking cigars all the time. And I'm like, I'm not getting it. And then one day I get a flavor and I was like, holy shit, I just tasted like vanilla. And I was like, is this flavored? No, it's not flavored. That's interesting. And then the guy was like, you know how to retrohale? And I learned how to retrohale, which is what you're doing every time you eat food and drink things. Like that's how you're tasting. Your mouth doesn't taste things. It gets five senses. Your, your smelling is your olfactory senses is what's doing the, the actual flavors. And so once you learn how to do that while you're smoking, it's like, oh, wow, this is, it's delicious. It's, it's, it complements a meal. It's like, you know. It's great. It's I all agree. the things a cigarette's supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I've explained it to people that like know wine and I explain like how wine can be thin or it can be lush. And I'm like, yeah. it's the same with smoke and yeah. it can taste like this or it could taste like that. And um, and I agree, like you have to look at your health in totality. And I think mentally it is one of the best things I've ever done because I only have like 
one to two cigars a week. Yeah. Not very much. Yeah. But when I sit down, that's 90 minute fuse where I'm going to sit there and either enjoy it by myself and decompress, or I'm going to sit there with friends and we're just talking for an hour and a half it's straight. It's meditative. 100% it's great. It's meditative. You know, it's not like when you're drinking at the bar and you're bouncing around and you're going to the bar and you're, you know, you feel like you're sitting with day. your friends and you're just going to sit there and smoke and talk. Yeah. And it's great. So that is. I try not to talk about health benefits of it because I think that would be really irresponsible mm -hmm. of me. And I think that's exactly what the FDA probably wants to see is stuff like that. I've mm -hmm. seen other uh, business owners in this industry talk about health benefits. And I'm like, dude, come on. You sound like a fucking salesman. Yeah. And that's one thing. Lose I think 10 pounds with Pravada Cigar Club. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, I have had multiple people, though. I will say this. And I've had this experience too. I used to get a lot of colds. Mm -hmm. I don't get a lot of colds anymore. Hmm. And I had another guy, Dan Cleveland up in uh, Minnesota. He told me that he used to get a lot of colds. Like he was sick often. And since he started smoking cigars, much less. There was talk in the beginning of COVID about smoke, uh, you know, having less uh, less rates. I don't know if any of that's true, but... Um, you know, Native Americans used to use it as a medicinal. I, I sit with this guy named uh, Art Sartorial Tobacconist. He's from Mississippi. His family were tobacco growers. He's been using it on his skin for his whole life. They used it as medicine. It, 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 there are other properties to it other than just smoke. And the one thing that I want to say is cigar tobacco, handmade cigars, are the one form of tobacco that is not processed in, in regards to adding chemicals. Mm -hmm. We are trying to strip all the negative out. That's what the fermentation part is about. Getting out the ammonia, getting out any, you know, of these, uh, 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 I guess, chemicals that ferment out of it, right? Getting mm -hmm. the gases out and and really getting a well-aged product. You can't make great cigars if you don't follow a good process. And that's the reason why some of these countries are falling behind that were once kings is they're not following the process, you know? So um, my, my I, I, I'm fully in tune with... Um, what's going on in our industry as much as someone who doesn't live in a factory can be. And, um, you know, I'm seeing, I, there's probably 150 uh, factories I could select from and I'm down to like seven that I'll buy from. Huh. I'm supposed to be getting the best cigars in the world and I'm gonna work with the best man. And that's like a values-based decision, right? Like you're just aligning and working yeah. with people who have the same values. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about like, I mean, I've heard you say really important things on the business side, right? From like timing to being exceptional. You've given our listeners a lot of good lessons, but what is your like personal ethos, if you will, yeah. that like guiding why? Yeah, so um, when I was a young man, um, I never got my oil changed. Didn't care too much about having a clean car. Didn't show up on time. Somewhere in my mid to late 20s, that changed. And I noticed that I liked things in order. I think I came from a very uh, dysfunctional, chaotic place uh, as a child. And I think maybe like as I'm maturing, like it, it came to like, no, I want to be a neat person. I want to have my shit together. I don't want to be like where I came from. So I started, um, I think that was the beginning of my path to what I call excellence, right? This word mm -hmm. gets thrown around a little bit, but I love the word. I love it. Um, and I look for excellence. I'm looking for the best of the best. And even if it means um, I won't be as successful mm -hmm. because I don't know why. There's just this value there for excellence. I want the best. We went to New York a couple of weeks ago. I took my wife there for a quick get. It was our first vacation, first time away from our child, six year old, <laughs> first time away. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so we went and we went to a restaurant called Danielle. I think they have like two Michelin stars and they have other, you know, this guy's like the top of the top and this location's top of the top. And so uh, we got there and we ate. And my experience, my wife enjoyed the food more than I did. Uh, I really liked the food, but what I couldn't get past and what made the va what what created the value for me was the service. And I never talk I I talk about service if it's great, right? But it's not like something I'm focusing on all the time. It was like a ballet. Uh, it was like a play. It was like 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 a, a choreographed 
situation. There wasn't one server. There wasn't two servers. There was like four or five servers. They were they would move things that were on the table for certain and then bring them back. And it was just amazing. It was absolute excellence. And so when you ask me how the restaurant is, even though in my mind, I'm saying I've had maybe better food elsewhere. Like the next night we had a, a meal that I enjoyed more. Was it better? I don't know, but it was fantastic. I, I like that meal better, um, which is subjective, but the service was no, I mean, th th so I, I love that. We also went to a show and I realized that I had been in music and I wasn't chasing excellence. Mm. I was Which is maybe uh, why it didn't work out. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I and 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 what I said to you when we started talking about excellence is um even if it means I'll be less successful, because oftentimes excellence is less successful. So, you know, you see a musician that is absolutely, it's very rare that Danielle, you know, can get to that restaurant, gets there, right? So I think in the restaurant business, it's much more recognized, but music, I went to the show, these guys are all Juilliard grads, they've mastered their instruments, they've mastered their voices, they've mastered this whole thing. And I was in the music business for like 17 years and the best musician I think I met was Scott Storch or Questlove, um, which, I don't think either one of them can hang at Juilliard, okay? So like these guys are masters of craft, but yeah. they'll never get that pop artist thing, you know? And so I left there like the marketer in me is like, I want to share this with the world somehow. Like they're not as successful as they should be. And it's it's a tough one. Well, um, it's the concept yeah. of like, I find so many parallels um, to like your business and ours actually. Like I've been really? sitting here the I've whole time I've been telling time, her like, for years. Holy really? shit. Dude, I've been watching stuff you do and I'm like, wait a minute, like, like all of it. The concept of disruption, you're going up against these huge names. Like we're fighting, you know, massive insurance companies every single day to do the right thing, to deliver excellence. But you're fighting this construct that bigger is better, right? A pop star like at this level or a restaurant this big versus the you know these curated excellent experiences yeah. that you have Pravada Cigar Club versus the you know Ethos Benefits versus a large publicly traded broker there's so many parallels and I think one of the biggest misconceptions in business is that bigger is better you know like and so and all of it but we're we're lucky right and so I think um I don't know all of our ages and where we but we're in the same group mm -hmm. of people right and um, I think that we're about to see some positivity in regards to, um, I, I think I've, I, until Provada Cigar, I've always been like, we're getting screwed. We, you know, we, the timing was terrible for our generation. We had 2008 and then there was this and that. And, and, and so now obviously I'm happy because I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know, doing it over here. But I think that now, of all times, we're about to see a shift in consciousness of wanting a more personalized experience. A transparent experience. Transparent experience. Yes. A more familial experience. Yeah. I think people are seeing what happens when you let corporations take over everything and you become really out of control in the process. And the hospitals are the thing that's on my mind as I'm having this conversation. Dude, it, it's that's pathetic. what we fight every single day. It's pathetic. It yeah. is so scary. God forbid any anyone gets sick, like really sick. You have to wait in line. And then you hear and about- And then you get medically bankrupt, even though you have health insurance. That's the other really like second part of the equation. I canceled <laughs> my health insurance years ago. I pay less now than I did with insurance. How's that possible? I don't get it. I'm not like doing less. I still send my kid to every, I, I just pay it in cash and I get a better. Yep. So I think that we might really reap the benefits of that. But what does that mean? It means that you have to be excellent at what you're doing because the first time you slip up, they're going back. And I would use Amazon as um, as an example, but the fact of the matter is, is that Amazon is excellent. That guy is into excellence and it worked for him commercially. And he figured out, I think his real genius has nothing to do with the business. It has to do with building teams. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. Culture. 
I mean, whatever he did is the right. I've heard the stories. Well, you can't do that. If you come to a meeting, uh, you know, if you bring a manager an idea at Amazon, they can't shut you down without writing a two-page reason on why they're, they're shutting it down. And so I think the idea of that is like, so that most ideas do go up the line. Like I, I, there's just so much brilliance in that, that it, it's excellent. And by the way, you can deliver me the items that used to take weeks and days, sometimes yeah. hours. That's Seven excellent. Hours. Yeah. That's excellent. So I don't think it needs to be like, I, I pose it as in my industry, um, family owned versus corporate, because that's, that's what it is in my industry. In every industry, it's going to be different. But um, I will say this. I think I was really lucky with my timing, right? And so the one thing that we want to do as entrepreneurs is be successful, right? Because that's, dude, it's time in versus time out. It's like Jay-Z, I, I always think about this. He was, he was saying that when he uh, thought about all the money he made selling drugs and then he divided it by the amount of hours he put into it, he could have done the same thing working at McDonald's, okay? And so... We want to put our time and energy into something that will be profitable or legacy building or just something that's going to come back to us. And so we really want to be careful, especially during times of success. All of those things you mentioned, farm rolled, LCA, could have been epic failures had I kept chasing them. So I'm really big on, and one thing I'll leave like in everyone's mind is like, do things... The Brian Dessen School of Business is starting things on a shoestring budget. And if they're really good, you're going to get signs of it right away. And if they're not, pivot. Yeah. So that's that's all I'll say about that is that I think we might be in a position where we can benefit from all the corporatization of stuff because people are getting tired of it. Yes. And I would much rather be able to call you guys if I have an issue with my insurance then have to wait on hold with State Farm or whoever else or Blue Cross. I mean, do you, you tr try calling in one of these places? It's insane. My wife went to a doctor that we know. We know the guy's wife. We'll never go back to him. But we know <laughs> the guy's wife. She has a, 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 um, a, a, a medication that she takes for uh, some sort of familial. Uh, she's got FMF. I don't know if you guys know what this is. It's a, it's a weird... Sometimes your your insides get like it's it's people only from like Mediterranean places get this. It's it's called Mediterranean fever basically. Mm, okay. And so it's there's this there's this medication you can take for it. I don't think it works. She does, but she's the one taking it, so maybe it does. I, I just don't think it works. I think it's a placebo to some degree. Um, they have no so few people have this thing that no one's doing research. They don't care. It's just. But it can be debilitating for days at a time. So anyway, um, she called the guy to call in another, and he's like, "No, you got to come in." And she's like, "For what? Are we so, gonna go through so this?" They paid a visit. Yeah, yeah. It's to sell the insurance. Yeah. So, so that's when you told her Pravada cigars also <laughs> heal that. <laughs> Ask the FDA. Put them So how about um, the doctors now that are? I go to one. I pay him seventy five dollars a month. Concierge, I guess. Yeah. What it's called. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's Direct great. primary care kind of thing. That's great, but this is just the beginning. So there's a lot of opportunity for private health care, I think. Um, there's it also a way to do it a hell of a lot better. Like, so here's the thing. You think, and then we'll close and tell our listeners where they can find you and all that good yeah. stuff. But like actually changing the American healthcare system, it's not going to happen in our lifetime. So like there's this concept of like, well, just screw it. Let's rebuild a new one, right? Mm -hmm. Which is kind of what you're talking about. Like, or like Medicare for all or like total privatization and get rid of all of that. The much better way to do it is to build an alternative system right alongside it and just mm -hmm. make it a clear choice because it's excellent, because it's an exceptional, mm -hmm. it's exceptionally better. So that's what we're doing through employer plans. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I just want to throw that out there because I think it's interesting. But it's using all those concepts that you're talking about. And now the timing is right because people are fed up with healthcare. So it's working really well. It's amazing. So with Pravada, actually, I'll close with- I'm not done with cigars though. I, I just want to say that. Okay. I'm not, cigars will not be my final business. No. I'm not done. No. Good. Last I'm not done. Yeah. No, I've learned so much on how to be an excellent entrepreneur. There's no way that I could limit my- uh, I have 12 years until my kid's out of school mm -hmm. and then I'm free again. 
Okay. Because I just like to move around. I like to be. Or I, I just like to go places. Well, we're right. we're all just hoping the the club doesn't change. You know, club won't change. Um, funny story about how I met Brian because I watched the uh, Bovida mm-hmm. video, and I think you actually went up there to meet yeah, him I did. And you shot with I him. Sure did. And that's the video I, I saw that video, and I think you shot in like Minnesota or something. So I just yeah, I assumed you lived up there. No, no, right? Minneapolis. Yeah. So I was in our local cigar lounge across the street from here. That's right. You were you had your pack with yeah. you too. Yeah. No, no, no. I didn't have the pack. I was oh. just smoking the cigar. Okay. So you you saw the cigar I was smoking. I was you're drunk. Like, I was drunk when no, I saw it. Just, no, I was. <laughs> I was <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I was drunk. I was. Hammered. We got really drunk after. Oh yeah, I, I, I was hammered. <laughs> For two years before COVID, oh man, to, through COVID, I haven't. I don't drink a lot anymore, <laughs> but I was being drunk on camera was a lot of the marketing for. Oh my god! <laughs> for, <laughs> yeah. So I was I was just at the cigar bar by myself after work, and I'm smoking the cigar, and Brian comes up to me. He's like, "Hey, man, I didn't want to bother you. I just wanted to tell you that's one of my favorite cigars." And I turn around, I look at him and he looks like this. So like, obviously I recognized him from the video because he's got the a very unique look, style. Yeah. And I was like, I know, dude, you sent it to me. Uh, that's right. I was like, you sent me the cigar. Yeah. And then we went outside and smoked probably yeah, another yeah. three cigars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great night. That was a great night. Um, so Amazing. for people maybe interested in cigars, learning more, figuring out what they like, Where's the best place for them to go? I know the YouTube thing has changed. Yeah. Because I, mean, I feel like they're hiding your videos from me. They are. Um, they are. That's why I said I don't think I could have done this. Dude, today. I don't I don't see them anymore. And I'm no. subscribed and I no. feel like they just don't even pop up. I know. It's not popular in the algorithm to be in tobacco. And even it mm-hmm. within tobacco, sometimes I just get on like an anonymous page and search of uh, cigars and I don't even come up. We got guys that are like, I don't even know who they are that come up. But anyway, you can go to PravadaCigarClub.com. We now have a videos tab okay, so that people can look at those videos, watch us going to some of these factories and making these cigars and then actually buy the cigar. And then when you get it in the mail, you can rewatch the video while you have the cigar. And so we try to create these experiences. We've got a bunch of documentaries on there. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll continue to put up content. Um, but PravadaCigarClub.com. Join the club, the rare uh, subscription, the first one that pops up, because that's the one that really gives you all the information yep. on the cigars. And, um, you know, it's a great experience. It's a great way to enjoy cigars. And um, over time, you'll start to see more of our products on shelves at stores. Our distribution network has gotten monstrous. Thanks we're to over the LCA. Five, thanks to the LCA. We're yeah. over 530 shops. Half of them carry our products, too, other than the LCA. Wow. Um, so it's been going really, really well. Uh, so as the club numbers are coming down a little bit, the the LCA and the online shop are making up for it. So that's been pretty cool <laughs> to see too. So you you really, you know, you always want to be um, thinking evolving. about this stuff. Yeah, evolving. Yeah. You're always progressing. Yeah. Right? So excellence. Let's talk about that before we go though, right? Because like excellence, it sounds, sounds kind of, you know, whatever. Um in its simplest form is just always every day trying to be better than you were the day before. And of course, that doesn't happen every day, right? I just went two weeks without working out. I just couldn't. I, I, we moved. This machine dis- destroyed me. Mm-hmm. I, I literally broke and came back, right? And by the way, uh, in my entrepreneurial career, I've had two nervous breakdowns where I was not in a good mental space for three, four months at a time. Maybe one. One was more drug induced when I was a musician, but, (laughs) um, but, but as a, as an entrepreneur, I remember having, I I got so angry one day that I just, I felt like, you you know, when you feel it, you feel hot and like, oh no, this is the stress plates are not, this isn't good. And later that day I like sat down at a restaurant and I had the worst panic attack and I Mm. pretty much stayed that way for like three months. So like it's a it's a battle, especially for people that are, you know, like me that are a little mental. Well, (laughs) for people (laughs) that feel. (laughs) For people that feel. People that have access to those deeper feelings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's not easy, right? But you just want to try to be better. And yes, there's I think even David Goggins talks about that during his you know, he's had setbacks for years at, at some times. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just continuously trying to seek a better way to be a better person, to be a better business, to be a better monthly, you know, package, to be yeah. just better at what you do, better online experience, right? That's it. And that's what corporations can't do. Yes. 
in order for them to do that, it takes years. Yeah. They're and a so, giant boat and you're a little speedboat just pivoting and excellent, excellent, yeah. excellent. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so I much for that. being you on the such show. You naturals at this, man. We gotta, <laughs> I'm going to do everything I can to uh, get the word out about the podcast. And I thank appreciate you. you guys having me here. And thank I can't you. tell you how refreshing it is to be able to talk about business. Yeah. Um, normally, I'm just talking about cigars, cigars. And business is my sport, man. This is what I live to do. I love it. That's why I said I'm not done with just hey, cigars. Man, I've been watching and I've told Chelsea, I'm like, look, he just did this thing. And like, here's how <laughs> I think awesome. it relates to our business. I'm so glad that that's visible. Yeah. For yeah. me, it is. Like, I, I'll sit that. there and think about it. And I'm like, wow, wow, this is how it's different from the industry. And this is, you know, you he's doing this. You should call me more and, often, man. We could talk oh, about this stuff. I don't we, have anyone to we, really. We move. But when we come back into town, yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll You guys are in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting that tax money. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. Was it 180 days? <laughs> yes. Is it Act 182, is that what it's uh, called? 60. 60. Act 60. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. No kids, right? Not yet. They love so it there. There's no, no the reason dream. not to. Where like, By the way, the food in Puerto Rico is fantastic. Yeah. If you're from New York, you have a preconceived notion of Puerto Ricans. That is not what they're like. Yes. <laughs> they're very peaceful, Even nice so, people. so being here in Florida, right. like the, the Puerto Ricans down here will be like those New York Ricans. And yeah. they'll, they'll be like, <laughs> My mailman told yeah. me that first. He was like, I'm not from New York. Yeah, yeah. And he's like the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. Yeah, so not that I, I grew up with all Puerto Ricans in, in yeah. like New York and Pennsylvania. So like I come from that like kind of, it's a rough culture. It's just, it is. The, the, that, that, you know, obviously not everyone, but for the most part in general, like, you know, growing up in Allentown, all the people there were from New York and they were, you know, not typically wealthy people. And, you know, uh, it's a street, it was a street era and a street culture. And so when you go to Puerto Rico, you see, it's like, oh, wow, it's nothing like this. Mm -hmm. These are not the Puerto Ricans I grew up with. They're, they're, so, they're so nice and friendly. They're like, like the hippie amazing. cousin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. And the food's fantastic. No, um, awesome. So, yeah. You run into like any of the Pauls down there? I know they're down there. The who? Logan oh, no. Paul? no. We're on the other side there. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's the flashy side. Well, I got I got some news. <laughs> I might be down there soon. So we'll, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're working on something we'll, we'll really talk cool. Talk about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you, you, Brian. Brian.